All right, guys, back to work, back to work. Boy, what the heck happened this afternoon? A bloodbath this afternoon. Markets tumbling hard into the close. And right about now, maybe you're checking the news websites, watching television, trying to figure out what the heck happened that caused all this this afternoon. But here's the reality. The news media, the news websites are not going to help us make money on Friday morning. Everything we need to make money tomorrow is right on these charts in front of us. So let's turn off the television, quiet that voice, in our head. Let's buckle down and make some money on non-farm Friday. Now, I have two important clues that tell us pretty much where the best entries and exits are for tomorrow. We'll cover those clues and my favorite trade for Friday. By the time we're done tonight, you'll have a simple roadmap to make some money on non-farm Friday. Now, before we jump in and talk trades for tomorrow's non-farm payrolls, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. And if you like these, less if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button for me. Give me a shout out down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, supporting the channel. Enough of the intro though, Joe. Let's go make some sense out of these marks and finish off the week with some more green tomorrow morning. Now, charts are all ready to go. NASDAQ and triple Qs are ready. I got the E-mini and the SPY is ready. We have two important clues on these charts tonight that tell us exactly how to trade non-farm payrolls in the wake of this bloodbath that we saw this afternoon. One of those big clues is right Right here on these 60-minute charts, this huge move down. Now, of course, probably by now, you know, it was kind of a combination of a lot of things. We heard about the escalation between Israel and Iran. We heard an announcement from NATO this afternoon about Ukraine entering NATO. Fed speakers finally admitted they may not actually cut rates at all this year. And we definitely expected there to be a bit of a sell-off ahead of that non-farm payrolls, which, of course, is coming tomorrow. So lots of different reasons why this thing sold off this afternoon, but the most important part of it is the first big clue for tomorrow, it is a big, big move going lower, a big move into big news tomorrow morning. Big news tomorrow. Let's look at our schedule for tomorrow. We'll come back in a moment and talk about entry tactics for non-farm. But first, though, there are two things on my radar for tomorrow. One, of course, is that employment number coming out at 8.30 Eastern Time. We know the Fed is watching all of these news reports very closely right now. This will be another important data point that will tip them off to maybe cut rates or as we heard from a lot of Fed speakers today, we may not see rate cuts. I think that's a lot of the reason why that marks took a bath here this afternoon. That's one important thing on my radar for tomorrow morning. The second thing though is, is tomorrow is a Friday. Fridays are a little bit different day of the week, different mindset, different personality. I have what I call the Friday mindset on Friday mornings. My goal on Fridays is to get into trades early when the markets are good and I'm at my best, remove risk early, take profit early. But one thing about Fridays, they love to run. They love to run. So early in, remove risk, take quick profit, but always leave a piece to run. Always leave that runner on Friday lunchtime, Friday afternoon. Go back and look at the last couple of Fridays. You'll see Fridays love to run. So employment number tomorrow morning, that's a huge, huge number coming tomorrow. We'll prep four different scenarios in the wake of that non-farm payroll tomorrow morning. And again, Friday mindset, right? Early in, when the markets are good, when I'm at my best, take off risk quick, get some profit locked up quick, and leave that runner. Now, back to our charts, though, because the money Money is made on the charts. Again, the news media is not going to help us make money on Friday morning. Let's cover down my favorite trades here for tomorrow. The big move down is important, but we don't trade off 60-minute time frames. We trade off tick charts every morning in our trade room. Over to our tick charts here right now. This course is a 7,000 tick chart linked up there in the upper right-hand corner. And if you're watching the first time right now, welcome, welcome. This is the 21 EMA. It is pretty much the only indicator you need to come out and find lots of winning trades with us every week in our members trade room. Now we have two important clues on the charts right now, right? A big move down and some big news for tomorrow. If you put these two together, there's basically two core strategies, key setups I'm tracking for tomorrow. One of them is very common. We'll start there tonight on the S&P. On the NASDAQ chart in a moment, we'll talk about that second core strategy as we go deeper into the video. But first though, let's talk about that first most common scenario. Anytime we see a big 
big move in one direction, we don't want to sell low, right? We want to sell nice and high. To do that, we look for what's called a two-legged pullback and a retest of that low. A two-legged pullback and a retest of that low. There are lots of ways in which we can make money off this. We can sell that two-legged pullback. We can buy that double bottom reversal. Remember, tomorrow's non-farm Friday, so we'll talk about later on in the video tonight. If that two-legged pullback turns into a reversal, we'll cover that, of course, as we go deeper into the video. My job tonight is to make sure we have a game plan, no matter what this market throws at us on non-farm Friday. Let's talk first, though, about two-legged pullbacks. Two-legged pullbacks, if you're going to my free video classes right now, a two-legged pullback, think about a measured move, right? A measured move, I want to get above that 21 EMA, and think about a measured move, right? An A, B equals C, D pattern, right? 100% extension. When I think two-legged pullback, I think going a little bit more than a measured move. So two-legged pullback, a bit more than a measured move. Now, at this point now, remember, we have non-farm payrolls tomorrow morning. This may keep on going. Right? We may V bottom off of this low because, hello, we've been a bull market for like years and years and years now, right? So I want to make sure we're ready for that going higher. I cannot pick, I can't pick that top on that two-legged pullback. What I'd like to do is, is use my failure pattern. Let those buyers come in and get in once, right? Get in twice and use their stops to fuel that move going back down to retest the low. Think about a failure pattern we teach in our free video classes. Then, as we make our move back to that low now, think about out, that bull trap pattern. It's a lower low in price and a move right above that high, right? It's a failure pattern. Again, we're not going to pick that top. We don't pick tops and bottoms, right? Because again, it may go right back up again. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Trap those buyers in. Let them try once. Let them try twice. Use their stops to fuel that move going back down to retest the low. On the way down to that low, think about that bull trap pattern. It's a lower low in price and a move just above that high. Again, a failure pattern into a bull trap. Remember, the target is is back down to retest the low. Now think about this for a second. Anybody who sells short up the highs, where's their profit target? Probably back down at these lows, right? So as those bears get short and take their profit off at that low, in come the rookie traders. It's a big move down. This is a horrible place to be a seller. If I can trap in some rookie bears down here, let them try a couple times, I'd love to use that same one try, to try that failure pattern to squeeze those stops and run all the way back up to retest that high. So think about this first kind of core setup, core strategy, one of the two strategies we're ready for for tomorrow. It's a two-legged pullback. Again, get above the moving average. Think about that measured move, right? A bit more than a measured move. Don't pick that top. Trap those buyers in with that buyer failure pattern. One try, two try. Use your stops to run back down. And before we go back and retest that low, get that bull trap pattern on the way back to retest the low. And again, Remember, I don't have a crystal ball. It may keep going lower, but if I start seeing some, some rookie bears, right, professional sellers are not going to sell way down there after a big move down. If I can see rookies come in and try once, try twice, I'd love to use a, a two-try failure pattern to run those stops and squeeze that sucker back up to retest those highs. Now, let's slow down for a second because I know most of you guys and gals watching right now, you've taken my free video classes. You know how to trade, make money with failures and traps, double bottom reversals. But if you're watching for the first time right now, this might be a brand new language for you. I look at things a bit differently than most YouTubers do. This might be brand new for you, but don't you worry. I teach all of these entry patterns. I have hundreds of examples of failures, traps, double bottom, double top top reversals, all taught in a lot more detail in our free video classes. I'll put a link up top here for you, upper right-hand corner. Grab that link that popped up there. Take that free trading course because the strategy I teach in that short video series will teach you a simple, simple trick we use in our members trade room to know exactly where the best winning trades are going to be each day. And most importantly, I'll teach you four of my favorite entry patterns to help kickstart you making money on your own. Guys, if you're not making consistent money right now, if you're 
missing the best trades each day, if you're struggling to qualify for a funded account at Apex or Top Step, hit that link up top there. Take that free course. It's perfect for someone to make the jump into full-time trading. That video series will give you an easy roadmap to follow so you always know where the best winning trades are going to be each day. Also, too, be aware, too, I'll put all the important links the description of the YouTube video tonight. I put the free class links down there. We trade together every morning in our trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I put membership information down there as well. Also, too, I'm on Twitter. I post updates on Twitter throughout the day. If you're on Twitter, give me a follow. All the important details there in the description of the YouTube video and a lot more examples, of course, as part of that free video course. So now you know, right? Now you know kind of the core setup, right? That two-legged pullback. Trap those buyers in. Use that that failure into that trap pattern way down. And again, speaking of traps, right? Trap those rookie bears in and squeeze that sucker back up to create what is usually going to be one big trading range. Now, let's talk about some variations of this here tonight because tomorrow's non-farm payrolls. Let's talk about some different scenarios for this, different variations of this. And again, later on in the lesson on the NASDAQ, we'll cover that second core strategy here in a moment. I'll make it worth your while to uh, stick around all the way to the end. Let's talk about double tops, double tops, because again, bear market down, big move down, very good chance we go up and retest that low. Sometimes we get a two-legged pullback, we get our one, two, we get that run going lower. For whatever reason, though, the buyers come in and hold that pullback and they try to make a run again. If we go back to retest the high, again, in this scenario, we'll already make money on that failure pattern, right? We're already in the green. Stop, stop us move down to that point of entry. We're fine on that trade, but we don't make it all the way back to retest that low. Buyers come in, they hold a little bear trap, blow that low, and they go back up and retest that high. Is this a reversal yet? It is not a reversal until they explode a convincing break above that high. We can now look to do it again, right? Do it again. Get that moving average coming over. Get those buyers trying once, trying twice. And think about, again, a double top. Remember, the market wants to go back and retest that low here. Get those buyers roped in. One try for the buyers, two try for the buyers. Use their stops to fuel that run going lower, that failure into that bull trap game plan we mentioned a few moments ago. So don't be confused, right? If it does pull back and double top like this, it is not a full blown reversal. And we'll talk about what a reversal looks like here in a moment. At this point, it's very common to get a big move down, up, double top, and then right back down again. And the, and, and the entry tactic we'll use is, is that failure into that, into that bull trap pattern. And again, don't forget, Back to retest the low, trap those bears in, and squeeze that sucker right back up. Again, one more variation of this. One more variation of this. I love the idea of a two-legged pullback, trap those buyers in, and back down again. But you know what? Sometimes there are so many bears up here, we simply don't get that bull trap, right? That buyer failure we want. Sometimes what happens is, sometimes we get a V top reversal. These are not easy. Not my favorite, but we'll make sure we're ready for these for tomorrow. We may pop up and this thing may get whacked right back down again. If it gets whacked back down again, watch for that pop down and that grind going lower. The most important thing about this is, is do not chase this thing going lower. Remember, if it gets whacked down like that, we want to sell high. I want to sell as high as I can up here. I don't want to sell down here because now my risk and my reward ratio is way off balance, right? I can fix that though by going out, finding a new channel off the low, bring it up around that high, and as we always say in our free video classes, look left, find some prior swings, and I want that short off the first test of that channel. Again, notice how I do that, right? I draw the channel off the lows, up around these highs, and this could be any of the entry patterns you guys are learning in the free video classes, right? It could be a bull trap, it could be a buyer failure pattern, it could be a pullback combination. Probably, probably not a strength trade, but definitely a bull trap, failure, pullback combo on the way back down to retest the low. Think about the risk reward equation on that one now. Now my risk is here, 
and my reward is here, right? That's a much better way to play that because, again, if you focus on the risk-reward equation, you'll be in a much better position because you'll be trading alongside professionals who know how to wait patiently for those trades, right? That V-top reversal, get that pop, right? That V-top, that grind down, and don't miss that first test, right? First test is always the best test off the highs of those channels. And last but not least here, and we'll go to the NASDAQ in a moment, and we'll talk about the strategy number two here on that on the video tonight. The last one here is that is that V bottom. All right. Now again, we expect a big two-legged pullback up into resistance and a retest of that low. Tomorrow's non-farm Friday. And again, I'm sure I, I would assume that a lot of the reason why this thing sold off today was because of speculation ahead of non-farm payrolls tomorrow morning. I'm not going to speculate what the news says tomorrow because, again, the news doesn't matter. All that matters is, is what happens on the chart. If we pop up here, if we pop up and start grinding, grinding, grinding higher, we now know this was nothing more than one big overreaction, and we're now right back up into those big ranges we have on the 60-minute time frame. Now, here's the problem though when this thing starts grinding higher that voice in your head is going to start getting getting anxious right get in get in you're missing the move do not buy high on this mark off that trend line off the highs bring it down off that big low look left find some of these prior swing lows and again what i want is i want that pullback and that first test off the low of that channel now remember this is very very important this could be It'll, it'll, it'll pop up and start grinding, grinding, grinding. The grind is the giveaway, right? If it simply runs up like this, that's not it. We'll still look for that one, two, back down again. But if it pops up and begins to grind, 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 going higher, all right, that grinder is your giveaway. Mark off that high, mark off that low. Again, now look left, find prior swings. And again, this could be any of the entry patterns here. It could be a bear trap. Look, I'm showing you right here, below prior swing. We could also get underneath the 21 EMA. That's where failure patterns live, a failure pattern into a pullback combination. Again, this may be all brand new terminology for you. It'll make a lot more sense once you get through the free video courses. But the most important thing though is, if it does pop up and start grinding, grinding higher here, don't chase after it. Because again, that grinder, all that is, is simply bears getting out of their positions and it allows the market to float going higher. Eventually, the buyers will want to come back in and buy this and they'll do this on that first pullback off of that low. One really cool thing about these V bottom reversals is, is that initial pop leg is the measuring leg. Right? We take the size of that first pop leg up, we pin it off that low, and that will give you the target as we go back up overhead. Remember, if you want to make more money tomorrow, remember, get in early, remove risk early, leave a runner, right? Leave a runner. Again, tomorrow's non-farm payrolls, big, big variable, big wild card for us. If non-farm payrolls spurs this thing going higher, that's the way I'm looking forward to trade it here for tomorrow. So now we know, now we know how to trade that two-legged pullback, that re test of that low we know some variations of this keep in mind for tomorrow we also know if that two-legged pullback turns into nothing more than a v bottom major reversal that covers the first core strategy for tomorrow now let's wrap things in the nasdaq and we'll talk about that second core strategy here on the nq over the nasdaq here on a 60 minute time frame again Lots of reasons why we think the market sold off today. Most important clue in this chart, though, is it's a big, big, big move down. But first, again, we don't trade off time charts in our trade room. We trade tick charts over now on our tick chart, a 4,000 tick chart here on the NASDAQ. Now, on the NASDAQ, it's the same exact game plan. It's a big move down. I want that two-legged pullback. Again, bull trap or buyer failure. Back down to retest that low. Then think about that double bottom move back up. We talked about that up, that double top back down. We talked about that V top grinder back down. And again, that pop and grind major reversal. The same as we talked about on the S&P can be applied directly to the NASDAQ. Now, with big news tomorrow, after a big move today, we happy ready for a range coming tomorrow. Now, you know me. I love ranges. I wish I, I, I wish was, I, I wish every day was a range day. 
let's talk about range markets. We had a lot of range marks. We, we talked about ranges last night here on the video, that slingshot reversal we mentioned last night on the video. If we start going sideways here in a range, what you need to remember is, is that ranges are magnets and ranges love to rotate. So what I do is in a bear market like this, I want to pop up. I want to get those buyers trapped in again and sell back down into that trading range. We talk a lot about this in our free video classes, right? So if we start going sideways on this, the game plan pretty much stays the same. I still like that two-legged pullback. Again, a bit more than a measured move. Again, I still don't want to pick the top up there. What I'll do is I'll wait for that breakout, pull, the, the breakout, get the buyers coming in, try once, try twice, look for that failure into that bull trap pattern we mentioned earlier on the S&P, right? Same basic game plan. Now, what's cool about ranges is that ranges like to rotate. So the amount that go above the range can now be projected down below the range, and that gives you now a good target. In a range environment, we'll take half off at the low of that trading range and leave the other half, because again, tomorrow's a Friday, let those trades run on Friday afternoons. That's an easy way to squeeze some more profit out of a range bond market. So again, if we do go sideways for tomorrow, hopefully we do because it's one of the easiest ways to make money. It's that buyer failure pattern. Again, a lot more examples of this stuff in the free video classes. It's a buyer failure pattern. It's a bull trap pattern on the way down. Profit comes off, low of that range, half off there, leave a half as the runner for that pendulum swing back down again. That is a very easy way to look at it. Where things get more challenging though is, in situations like this, that slingshot we talked about last night, right? So if we go sideways here in a range tomorrow on the NASDAQ, where things get more challenging is, is when it goes lower. When it goes lower first, these tend to be head fakes down here and they snap right back up. Again, think about that Think about that slingshot we talked about in last night's video. Now, I can buy this, but to do that, I need to use a crown reversal pattern. It's very simple, right? It's basically a bear trap. It's bears trying once, it's bears trying twice, it's a higher high in price, and a move right below that low. A strong signal candle is the trigger here for that run back up again. Again, we know that ranges love to rotate. So we take some off at the top of that range. We measure the amount below that range. We pin that back up above it. And that now becomes our objective on the other side of that trading range. Okay. Now, remember, at this point, we are still an overall, we're still a big move down right in a bear market right now. So knowing that is the case here, there are going to be sellers up here most likely. But again, remember, these types of slingshots off the low, this is a lot of bullish momentum going higher. This may end up going up into one of those pop and grinds, right? It may it may slingshot off that low and never look back, right? We may get one of those pop and grind moves like this, right? It may, it may pop up. We may take our profit up there, but it may not stop. It may keep going and grinding and grind. Again, once you see that pop and grind move, draw that trend line, mark off that low here, right? And start thinking about how to buy the low of that channel, right? That first test is the best test, right? So kind of keep in mind on that. But again, right, that will be if we continue going, right, going higher here. If we don't, right, if we start holding these highs up here, moving average comes over, buyers come in, they get a bit too aggressive, one try, two try, failure into bull trap going lower again. See how that works, right? So again, these are always kind of the tricky ones, right? It goes sideways into a range, and again, Raiders are magnets, they like to rotate. We then bear trap below that low. Again, I call these crown reversal patterns are basically two tries for the bears and a bear trap entry below that low. It's a higher high in price and a bear trap below, right below that little low in between. And again, we know where ranges like to go. They like to rotate going higher. So again, mark the amount below, up above, that becomes our big target. Leave that runner, right? Leave that portion of the position to run. And again, from there, this, this, this is not a good spot to be a buyer, right? It's an overall bear move right now. There'll probably be a lot of bears up there to short that thing. I do not want to buy into it. But if I start seeing buyers once, buyers twice, again, ranges like to rotate. They rotate down, up, 
down, up, back and forth like this. A beautiful spot here for a bull trap. Technically, this would be a buyer failure pattern. I would love a bull trap pattern up there, but it could be nothing more than a buyer failure. The bull trap I do need, though, is, is on that move going lower, right? It's that lower low in price and that bull trap pattern above that high. And where's the market want to go? It wants to rotate all the way back down to retest that low. We should expect, unless we see, unless we see a major reversal tomorrow, we should expect a range to form down here somewhere in and around this area. Buy low, sell high. Again, bull traps off the highs, right? Bull traps off the highs, bear traps off the lows. And that's the game plan we have for range coming tomorrow. Now, that's the plan for tomorrow morning. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, come trade it with us. The easiest way to make consistent money in the markets is to learn and trade along every morning in our trade room. I'll put all the important links tonight in the description of the YouTube video. Begin first on the free classes first. If you're here for the first time, it's been a fantastic week so far. we got one more day left. Hope you guys learned a bunch tonight. Hope you use this information to earn a bunch tomorrow. Again, turn off the television, trade that chart in front of you, go make some money on non-farm Friday and hopefully I'll see you sometime soon trading with us in the morning room at 8 o'clock Eastern time. In the meantime, be well, be nice to each other out there and be here next time. Adios amigos. Bye-bye for now.